can lament whenever I think of this generation. Woe to the ungodly youth of this generation. What a generation! Sodom and Gomorrah seems to be more decent than this generation. Criminals are now celebrated as Yahoo boys in this generation. It is no longer called bleaching but glowing. It is no longer called rituals or blood money but Yahoo plus. It is no longer prostitutes but slay queens and slay mamas. Drug dealers are now called hustlers. And harlots is now a round girl. Church workers now comment on immorality posts in the name of Freaky Freaky. It is no longer called fornication but love making. Even rudeness is now savage. Pride is now small girls with big God. Gambling has been upgraded to bed Niger. Pornography is now recognized as BB Niger. Premarital pregnancy is now the main proof to show that a lady is fruitful and not barren before getting married. Can you see how they upgraded human killings to be politics? Most of these evil acts are done because of a misguided concept of grace message. Virginity, that was one of the most expensive assets, is now cheaper than a plate of food. I have seen ladies who denied guys access to their ATM pins, account balance, birth certificate, social media accounts, but yet they give them easy access to their private parts. Amongst all these, which one are we to protect from a second party? Haven't you seen when someone will abandon the good news of the Bible just to get news from Yaba Left or Pramini, Linda Ikeji's blog? Youths are ready to die for their political parties rather than the gospel. We are in a generation where youths pay more respect to the voice of celebrities than the voice of God's ordained prophets. They even monitor and follow up ballot boxes while the new converts in their churches are perishing because of lack of follow-up. We are in a generation where ladies are now scheduled for hip surgeries, boob surgeries, guys are now going for manhood enlargement. All these are just to satisfy their sexual urge and boost their fornication spirit. No matter how you chose to live your life, always remember that there is something called death, there is a time called judgment, and there is a place called hell. We are in a generation where cultism is now practiced in primary and secondary schools all in the name of protection. A generation where teenagers and youth claim to go to church but end up in their boyfriend's house. This is the generation where an eight-year-old girl can now conceive and bear a child. I sit and lament whenever I think of this generation. This is the generation where young ministers bearing the titles of pastors, prophets, bishops, evangelists, apostles, born on the altar of God, but the life that they live behind the altar is totally nothing to write home about. A young minister preaching to a lady behind the altar that fornication is not a sin. Oh, ye foolish generations, brood of vipers, who had bewitched you? So then, are we going to continue living in sin because we are no longer under the law but under grace? God forbid. Should we, live in it? Should we continue living in sin because grace abounds? Never. This is the generation where rulers, priests, now legalize same-sex marriage. A man and a man can get wedded on the pulpit by a priest. A woman and a woman can get wedded on the pulpit by a priest. Even the electromagnetic law states that unlike poles attracts while like poles repels. But in this generation, the reverse has been the case. Like poles now attract. This is the generation where youths go to church no longer with the mindset of serving God, but with the mindset of finding boyfriends and girlfriends, with the mindset of showcasing new dresses, with the mindset of causing confusion and gaining fame. I sit and lament whenever I think of this generation. This is the generation where youth has turned the church of God into some sort of event center. Youth now commit all sorts of immoral acts in the church. Youth steal in the church. Youth tell lies in the church. Youth fornicate in the church. When I sit and look, I see nothing in the hands of this generation to pass on to the next generation. And I weep and lament for the next generation. Youths misbehave thinking they have time saying, allow me to flex my life now that I am still young. I have just two questions for you. I hope you know that this world is not your home. 
And I hope that you know that the life you are living is not your own. A time shall come when the owner of this life shall take his bread back and ask you to give account of every single day you lived on earth. This calls for wisdom. He who has an ear, let him hear. These are the words of Abu, the son of Jacke, in the book of Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 11 to 14. He says, There is a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. This is the generation. There is a generation who are pure in their own eyes, but yet is not washed from their filthiness. This is the generation. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids lifted up. This is the generation. There is a generation whose teeth are as sword and jot it as knives to devour the poor from the earth and the needy from amongst men. This is the generation. This is the generation where ladies spend hours on the mirror applying makeup, spend hours on their phone operating, but it's hard to find a young lady sitting and studying the Bible. A generation where ladies use their money to buy sex toys just to satisfy their sexual urge. A generation where guys pay a huge sum of money to go to the club, but you will hardly see them support the project in the church. What a generation. The conclusion of the whole matter is fear God and keep all his commandments for this is the whole duty of a man. The philosopher charges you in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 from verse 9 to 10. It says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Walk in the ways of thy heart and in the sight of thy eyes. But for all these things, know that the Lord shall bring thee unto judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are all vanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, why the evil days come not. I urge and charge all this moment, all the youths in the house, cast out the evil work of the flesh, for the king is coming soon. Give your lives to him. Live holy. Choose to serve him all the days of your life. I go by the name Azrael Elion, and I am the voice of purity.